So here's a question for you. If I have a function that grows the rate n to the 4 over 3, is that a member of a, the set of algorithms that grow with complexity n log n? What do you guys think? Is that true or false? So you can use limits, so you can use L'Hopital's rule and use limits to answer this, but I'll show you a cheating way that also works to answer this question. So if you have a calculator, which I don't have, if you have a calculator, we can basically take an idea like this graph here and plot this. Let's just start with a slightly simpler example before we go to this one here. Let's take the example that I showed earlier, where I have n and time. Here's an algorithm that grows the rate of n, and here's an algorithm that grows the rate of n squared. Okay. As I mentioned before, we don't care about when n is small, when n is 1. What we care about is when n is big, when n approaches infinity. And so what we really want to know when we're comparing two algorithms, as n approaches infinity, what happen, how, how do these two algorithms compare? So a simple way to answer this question is to think of a really large number, let's say 1,000, and calculate what 1,000 to the 4 thirds is, and then calculate what 1,000 times log of 1,000 is. And so what's 1,000 to the 4 thirds? We get our calculator. We get the answer. 10,000. What's log of 1,000? Two, four, five, three. We can use any base we want, right? It doesn't matter if we use base 2 or base 6 or base 8 or base 10. So log of 1,000 is 3 times 1,000 is 3,000, yeah? So if we plot our graph here, here's n, here's time, we would say that n to the 4 thirds is going to be up here at 10,000, and n log n is going to be down here at 3,000, okay? We know that both these lines have to go through 0, 0. It doesn't matter what shape they are. And so now we can answer the question, is n to the 4 thirds big O of n log n? So here's our n log n line. Here's our big O of n log n. And so what's our answer? That's false, right? n to the 4 thirds is going up here. n log n is going over here. And so this n to the 4 thirds does not lie in our big O of n log n region. So this one would be false. Is that clear? What I just showed you is the easiest way to answer those questions. There are a couple of cases where it will trip you up if you answer it that way. Um, and the strictly speaking correct way to answer it is using L'Hopital's rule. But all of the questions that I will ask 
ask you, if you answer it the way that I just showed you, you'll get the appropriate answer. So let's take a look at a couple more examples. Um, so here we have, uh, let's say we've got 3n cubed plus 4n squared plus 5n plus 6. Is that a member of the set of functions that are theta n cubed? Is that a member of the set of equations that have functions theta of n cubed? Yes, it is. So remember our rules. We ignore any of the lower order terms. We don't care about the n squared, the n, or the 6. And we also ignore um, the 3 here. So all we're saying is, is n cubed a member of the set of theta of n cubed? So, of course, this one is true, okay? Let's take a look at another one. What about n times n minus 1 over 2 is a member of the set of equations, of functions, excuse me, that are big O of n squared? True or false? That's true. The left-hand side, n, n times n minus 1, is n squared minus n over 2. So that's true. What about 2 to the n compared to omega of n? True or false? Let's take a big number. What's 2 to the 1,000? It's really big, right? It's like 1 times 10 to the 100 and or 130, and n is 1,000. So again, if we were to plot our graph with n and time, 2 to the n would be up here, n would be way down here. And then you just have to remember where on the graph our different areas are. So here we have little omega of n. Is n cubed big O of yes n squared? No. no, definitely not. Is n squared big O of n cubed? Yes, it is. n squared does not grow as fast as n cubed. <laughs> 